Good afternoon, good people. I know that I have asked you to jump on from my personal page so that more people will be able to get access to this live um, video. So do join me. I shall wait for you guys to jump on. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I hope you're all doing well. Do subscribe, like and share the video so that other people may have the opportunity to join in the conversation and um, be blessed, hopefully, by what I'm about to share. So I have to apologise first for being a little bit late. Um, the clocks changed yesterday and I wasn't aware of it. So I said that we'd be on, well, I'd be on at two o'clock, but it was actually going to be three o'clock your time. Uh, no, sorry, three o'clock my time and two o'clock your time. So apologies for that or oh, whatever. See, I'm still confused. <laughs> what is it? Is it? It's, it's three o'clock then. And two two o'clock here. Right. OK, so, yeah. So, you know, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, hopefully the broadcast will not follow the same format of pure confusion. I, ho I hope not. But uh, hello, Ikria, Aisha, Ikria, Anita, Cheryl. Thank you very much for joining. Can the six of you press the share button? Can you do that for me, please, so that other people can join in? And, you know, I had already said to myself that even if I have one person that logs in to this broadcast, and that is the one person that I believe I will be speaking to and needs to hear this broadcast. Anita, hi, Delis. Thanks for giving me the earrings upon your return, looking lovely. <laughs> do you know, actually, somebody else asked for these earrings, so what I'll do is I'll give one to her and I'll give you the other one, and you can do, like, a little Janet Jackson thing. So... Thank you very much for joining me. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, some of you may not know that I was trying to get back to London, but that wasn't possible. I wasn't able to secure a flight on the flight that left Accra yesterday. So I am still in Accra, Ghana. Um, I couldn't sleep yesterday. Not that I was particularly worried, just one of those nights where, hello, EMC, just one of those nights where I just couldn't sleep. Um, and so therefore I was up at about three o'clock in the morning and hi Michelle I just had this idea something just dropped in my spirit that look you're going to be in Ghana till whenever as of today Ghana is on a two-week lockdown okay and I said to myself well what can I do to keep myself focused and occupied within these two weeks so hi obviously hi Michelle and I said to myself I am going to encourage myself. Hi, Elsie. Guys, those of you that have joined, I would really appreciate it if you could share this broadcast because I think it is something that will encourage people and I think people need to hear. And the topic, you know, I will tell you what it's about in a second. So as I was laying on my bed, I was half asleep and I got up and I thought, right, I'm going to put together something over the next 14 days, very short and sweet. Hi, Malcolm, thanks for joining very short and sweet, called Life, Laughter and Lockdown. Now, as I said, in Ghana, we are on a 14-day lockdown. I know it's already happening in London and other places. Um, and I thought, I'm going to do this over 14 days. And the first episode was actually something else. But this morning, I was just having my quiet time, and I thought, the first topic is going to be fear. So that's just a little bit of background as to why I have decided to do this. Now, it's no secret that we are going through this pandemic and we're going through it globally. There are very few places in the world that haven't been touched by what is going on concerning the coronavirus. Now, I will be honest with you. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining. Those of you that are joining, I really want to see that you have shared this broadcast. I never ask people to share my broadcast very, very rarely. But I think this is something that is outside of my normal. Well, I feel it's outside of my normal work. And I think that it's something that people will find helpful. I'm quite confident that people will find it helpful. And um, I, this coronavirus situation has touched everybody. I had somebody inbox me two days ago to say, my husband is in hospital with coronavirus. He is on a ventilator. Um, I have a friend who has got the coronavirus. Thankfully, both parties are doing well. There was a third person that I was informed yesterday, another friend of mine, who has got the coronavirus. So this is something that is touching very, very many of us in different ways. Now, why I wanted to talk about fear is because that seems to be 
the common emotion that most people are feeling right now. And I think it's important, hi Ahmed, thanks for joining. I think it's important that we speak about it. Now, the problem that we have as human beings is not being able to tap into our emotions and say or express how we truly feel. So a lot of us go through life in emotional denial. We don't honestly say how we feel, whether it's in relationships, whether it's how we feel in the workplace, whether, it, whether we um, are in a situation in, in doing business negotiations, whatever it is, very rarely do we feel confident to express how we feel. Now, when we do that, we are not able to manage the emotions that we feel. So, you know, take me, for example, you know, going through the whole grief journey, one of the main things that I said was that I was very, very purposeful and intentional about how I managed my grief journey. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is I embraced all my emotions. Everything that I felt, I acknowledged, I, I um, recognized and I respected. So if I felt really down, I accepted, I felt really down. I didn't try and say to myself, it's not too bad, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I didn't do any of those things. I accepted, I am really down, what am I going to do about it? So that is how I managed that emotion at that time. Now we're in a situation where people are fearful. And in all honesty, they have every right to be fearful. And it's understandable why they are fearful. For the first time in our lifetime, we are being forced to stay at home. We're being forced to stay at home because of this big monster that is out there. So how do we manage our fear? First, we have to acknowledge how we feel. What is it that is making us afraid? What are we fearful of? What is it that is interfering possibly with the perspective that we have about the situation that we are in? And like I said, some people have fears about the situation that are very legitimate. So I have a few friends that have underlying health conditions, you know, that are being instructed to do things that they have never had to do before. How do you acknowledge that person's fear and how do you allow them to come to a place where they are peaceful and are able to manage their emotions so that that fear does not become crippling or overwhelming? So I will tell you how, what I think you may find helpful in being able to manage your fear. Acknowledge it, embrace it. Then speak, talk through that fear. So if your fear is I think that I am going to die, then the next conversation is what is it about death that makes you fearful? So that you can start to acknowledge where you are and go through and walk through a process that hopefully will bring you to a place that allows you to have control. Because what fear is, is basically a lack of control over a situation. That is what fear is. What am I going to do if X happens? And you know, in other episodes, I'm going to speak about stress and anxiety and how to manage it. So the, the main thing is a lack of control of the situation, which again, in its rightful perspective, is accurate. We have no control over this situation. So let me just stop there and see if you have any comments. That, is there any comments? Oh, I have to introduce Yabba to you. She's not going to come. Don't worry. <laughs> She's laughing. She's not going to come on camera, but Yabba is like my daughter. So she's actually uh, Yemisi Parkrosse's daughter, but actually she's mine. Yemisi just borrows her. <laughs> so she's my daughter. And she is the person that was helping me on my uh, online broadcast for the Not This Winner. She did an amazing job. And yes, a lot of you, sorry, I forgot to tell you, a lot of you were saying, oh, she did so well and it was really brilliant. Da, da, da. And, and yeah, she was very fast paced. So it was great. So props to Yaba because she's, she's going to be helping me um, whilst I do these, these broadcasts. So is there any comments that anybody has or are they really very quiet um so we have a comment from anita agri okay she's agreeing with you she says true that fear is a common emotion on a global scale yeah I I absolutely agree. yeah and, and i think everybody is is feeling fearful and it's about as i said acknowledging that fear 
and putting things in its rightful perspective. But it is also about addressing why you're fearful. Fear has to come in via an entry point. You don't just wake up in fear. Something has got to either you know, drop in your spirit or something that you have been exposed to that you have heard, something that you have been told or something that you have been seen. Something, sorry, something that you've seen or something that somebody has spoken to you. That puts in that seed of fear. So again, it's about being reflective and saying, you know, what is it that I have exposed myself to that has allowed me to be fearful? A lot of people are listening to the news. I cannot tell you the number of coronavirus WhatsApp messages I've received, things on the news. It is a hell, sorry, somebody was trying to call me. It's a hell of a lot of information being thrown at us daily. Now, you have got to be honest with the kind of person that you are to determine the kind of things that make you fearful. So if you know that by hearing bad news constantly and consistently, then you have the power and the control to say, right, I'm not going to listen to the news every hour on the hour because it's making me fearful, anxious, you know, scared. And if that's the case, what you then need to do is regulate what it is that you are, uh, that you're allowing to feed into your soul and your spirit. Okay. So any questions? Um, Anita Adi in T says, please address how some Ghanaian journalists put fear in people. Okay. Nobody puts fear in anybody. You have to accept that fear. It's like me saying to you, you are useless. Do you believe that you're useless? What have you told yourself? So, as I said, we are in a situation that is unprecedented in our lifetime. Yeah, and I'm making the assumption on the age bracket of the people that are watching in our lifetime. What we are being exposed to is unprecedented. Therefore, we have to safeguard our eyes and our ears. And sorry, the dog's just gone under my legs and has tickled me. <laughs> he would normally banish him from the room. But um, we have to be conscious of what we allow to be fed into our spirit. So again, if the Ghanaian journalists are putting fear into people, you have the power and the authority not to pick up that newspaper, not to tune into that radio station and find something else to fill that gap. So these are some of the things that you can do. Surround yourself with people who are positive, prayerful and purposeful people, people that know that they have got a purpose and they know what their purpose is. And if they know their purpose is to uplift and encourage, associate yourself with such people. It's very important. The people around you can either promote fear or demote fear. You need to ask yourself who you've got in your circle. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. This is from Michelle Okwe. She says, how do I politely ask people not to send the morbid pictures and videos of the coronavirus patients who have sadly died? By saying to them, can you please stop sending me these pictures? I don't find them uplifting, they are very disturbing. That simple, yeah? I am very particular about what I allow to feed into my spirit and I guard it passionately and fiercely. I refuse to allow people to dump on me mentally or emotionally or spiritually. I am very, very protective of my emotional and mental boundaries. Don't ever be shy to protect those boundaries. You know, if people aren't shy to send it, then you shouldn't be shy to tell them to stop. It's that simple. Don't be afraid. If you want me to, you know, write you a little something that you can cut and paste and send to people, um, I'm quite happy to do that. That's no problem. Any more questions? Yes, from the same person, same Michelle Okwe. She followed up with, while I respect we are worried and the news is upsetting, how do I support friends who are scared without making myself feel low as I try to encourage myself to be positive? I don't want to come across as dismissing their feelings. I, I do understand that. And what I will say to you is stay in your lane. And I don't mean that horribly. It means that you're not yet at that place where you can encourage because you're still struggling with your own fears. And, and the truth is that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. It's kind of like being on a plane and they say, look, you've got to put your mask on first 
Even if you have a baby, you need to put on your mask before you can tend to anyone else. This is exactly the same. Do not put your other people's needs above your own in this instance, because it means that you are, you are actually going to bring yourself down. So I think it's really important that you check in with yourself and are, and are aware of where you are mentally and emotionally before you go out and encourage other people. And I think one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was to show that um, not that I'm superhuman, contrary to what some people think, I do actually have emotions and I do have my own concerns, but I felt I want to walk this journey with you and I want to be able to be a source of strength to people because I am in the same situation. Maybe my situation may be a little bit worse because I'm not here with my children and I am not sure exactly when I will be released. So what I'm trying to do once again is say, if I can do it, come on guys, you can do it as well because I am no better or more special than you. However, I will tell you my secrets on how I am able to manage myself in this environment. Um, yeah, but how much longer do I have? Now, we've been 60 minutes. Okay. But we have an interesting question here. Okay. It's from <coughs> Anita me. Agri, mm -hmm. Auntie Anita. She says, are there any mantras or scriptures you'd suggest for people to learn to dispel fear? Well, actually, um, she's kind of, she must be in the spirit because I, I do have something that I would like to share. And these videos the, that I'm going to be doing every day, um, your time, 3 p.m. I'm not going to get that wrong again. Um, I will find something that I would like you guys to write down and repeat in your quiet time of work. Whenever you feel something in your, you know, in your heart, when your heart begins to be a little bit wobbly. And what I would like to share and what I use is this. I have not been given the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I'll, I'll repeat that. I have not been given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, power, yes, because you are not powerless. I've given you a few pointers on things that you can do to be able to maintain your power in what you allow to go in through your eye gate and your ear gates, okay? Love. I have spoken about compassion consistently from when this started, that this is a time for us to look out for one another in whichever way we can. Soundness of mind. If you have a sound mind, fear can be put in its rightful perspective. So on that note, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Join me tomorrow at 3 p.m. I will not be late. I will go onto my main page to remind you to jump on here. Please, can you share this video? There's 33 of you watching. There should be 66 shares. So if, if this is, you know, encouraging you in any way, I would really like you to help encourage people because I can't speak to the whole world. You're the one that will, you know, help me to do that. And I'm speaking, you know, literally and metaphorically. I am relying on you because there are, there are so many people that are not in a good place. And, you know, I do get messages privately and I go onto other pages across Facebook and people are fearful. So I hope that during these 14 days of, of life, laughter and lockdown, that we will actually come to a place where we'll, be, we'll feel more empowered and a lot more in control of where we are during this time. Have a fantastic afternoon, guys, and I shall see you tomorrow. Take care and God bless.